Actors often go to great extremes for a role, but the following actor's crazy on-set behavior gives new meaning to the term too far. From on-set meltdowns to physical altercations, you won't believe some of the lines these actors crossed. Every story that's come out about Jared Leto's method acting while filming his scenes as the Joker for Suicide Squad has sounded less awe-inspiring than simply gross. He confessed to E! News that he sent various cast members, well, used condoms and anal beads. I did a lot of things to, to create a dynamic, to create an element of surprise, of spontaneity. That's surprise! Yeah. Seriously, dude, what? I mean, the Joker is somebody who doesn't really respect things like personal space or boundaries. Fortunately for Leto, he didn't mess with Viola Davis, whose reaction to his onset antics perfectly summed up the reaction of any rational human being. I would have got my husband, who was called Headache Ball, back in the day when he played football, and I would have said, take care of the Joker. Of all the film set freakouts in Hollywood history, none may ever equal the expletive-filled rant Christian Bale fired off at cinematographer Shane Hurlbut during the making of Terminator Salvation in 2009. It painted a horrible picture of Bale, who came off looking like a rage-filled blowhard after Hurlbut reportedly distracted him during a quiet, emotional scene. Am I gonna walk around and rip your lights down in the middle of a scene? Then why the f are you walking right through? Ah, uh, da 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 da, like this in the background. Listening to Bale's tantrum years after it leaked, it's easy to understand why he was quick to apologize on K Rock FM's Kevin and Bean show. There is nobody that has heard that tape that is hit harder by it than me. Aww. So I make no excuses for it. it, is inexcusable. Bale went on to say that he and Hurlbutt made up very shortly after, although, shocker, they haven't worked together since. Katherine Heigl is one of those actresses who's reportedly so difficult to work with. Entire lists are made about her alleged onset behavior. In the case of the 2010 movie Life as We Know It, it depends who you believe. While the film's director and executive producer praised Heigl's work on the movie to The Hollywood Reporter, some insiders claimed they witnessed desperately difficult situations involving the Emmy winning star. The source revealed she can cost you time every single day of shooting wardrobe issues, not getting out of the trailer, questioning the script every single day. Even getting her deal closed at Warner's was hard. She hit that point of no. When you start to remember that Heigl reportedly made $12 million for the movie, you can't help but roll your eyes. It's not a huge wonder then that Heigl has essentially disappeared from Hollywood. As fun as she was to watch, you still have to play nice at work. Rumors have persisted for years that Gene Hackman was a nightmare to work with on the set of Wes Anderson's The Royal Tenenbaums. Those stories were finally confirmed by Anderson and Tenenbaum stars Gwyneth Paltrow and Angelica Houston during a 10th anniversary screening of the film at the New York Film Festival in 2011. According to IndieWire, all three of them admitted to being scared to work with Hackman in the first place. During a Q&A panel, Houston said, I was a lot scared, but I was more concerned with protecting Wes. None of us have heard or seen of Gene since this movie. Later in the Q&A, Anderson vaguely confirmed a long-standing rumor that, yes, Hackman really did call him the C-word. Still, he did his best to downplay the whole situation, saying, He's a huge force and I really enjoyed working with him. Even though he was very challenging with me, it was very exciting seeing him launch into these scenes. He may be funny while the cameras are rolling, but in between takes, Mike Myers is reportedly incredibly difficult to work with. His ridiculous antics on the set of Wayne's World have been agonizingly detailed by the film's director, Penelope Spheris, who later told Entertainment Weekly that she, quote, hated that bastard for years. She vented, you should have heard him when I was trying to do that Bohemian Rhapsody scene. I can't move my neck like that. Why do we have to do this so many times? No one is going to laugh at that. Even worse, according to ABC News, Spheris recalled a moment when Myers spent hours on the phone with his manager threatening to quit because the set didn't provide margarine. If there's one director in Hollywood you shouldn't piss off, it's Steven Spielberg. That's allegedly what Julia Roberts did while filming Hook in 1991. Reportedly heartbroken over the end of her relationship with Kiefer Sutherland, Roberts was rumored to have been notoriously difficult to work with, to the point where some tabloids referred to her as Tinker Hell according to the New York Times. Even Spielberg himself confirmed tensions on the set in an interview with 60 Minutes, saying flat out, it was an unfortunate time for us to work together. Steven Spielberg, I, I find quite confused. I find him to be, uh, unfortunately, not, not, as, not as good at remembering the time that we spent together as, uh, as I am. 
If tabloid rumors are to be believed, Jennifer Lopez may have experienced her own unflattering moment while filming the romantic comedy What to Expect When You're Expecting. According to the New York Daily News, Lopez, who had just split from her husband of 10 years, Mark Anthony, wouldn't talk to anyone directly on the film's Atlanta set. In fact, the only way she allegedly would communicate was through her handler. So much for still being Jenny from the block. The exact details of how and why Shia LaBeouf threw a punch at Tom Hardy while filming their 2012 movie Lawless are unclear. LaBeouf first alluded to it in an interview with Details, and Hardy confirmed the altercation in a subsequent chat with Den of Geek, saying with a laugh, He just attacked me. He was drinking moonshine. I was wearing a cardigan, and er, went down. The actual punch has since been downplayed. LaBeouf later told MTV News that it was brotherly love, not moonshine, that caused the fight. Meanwhile, director John Hillcoat claimed on Reddit that while the fight did happen, Hardy wasn't actually knocked out. Instead, the two of them simply had to be restrained. Isaiah Washington was fired from the set of Grey's Anatomy in 2007 amid rumors that he directed a homophobic slur at co-star T.R. Knight during a heated fight with Patrick Dempsey on the set the previous fall. In the lead-up to getting fired, Washington repeatedly denied the allegations, most famously during a press conference at the 2007 Golden Globes. No, I did not call T.R. a f Never happened. Never happened. <laughs> Knight contradicted his account. Washington finally copped to his offense in an interview with Larry King, claiming he meant to use the offending word in the context of, quote, somebody who is being weak. And goodbye, Isaiah Washington. Lindsay Lohan's bad behavior on the set of Georgia Rule is the stuff of Hollywood legend. According to the Los Angeles Times, things eventually got so bad that the studio chief of Morgan Creek Productions actually sent her a letter in which he claimed she was, quote, acting like a spoiled child. Lohan, who was often late to the set or missed filming days altogether, even ticked off various cast members, including none other than two-time Oscar winner Jane Fonda. Amid rumors of an on-set blow-up, Fonda confirmed to CBS News that, yes, she once cursed Lohan out in her trailer. She was late one day, and I got mad, and I went in, and I said, get your ass out here on the set. If it's any consolation for Lohan, her feud with Fonda was limited to just that incident, and Fonda claimed that overall she loved working with her. If Patton Oswalt is to be believed, Wesley Snipes was a terror to work with on the set of Blade Trinity. He would only answer to the name Blade. You, you couldn't call him... <laughs> The blade. blade, yeah. Speaking to the AV Club in 2012, Oswald described Snipes as an off-the-rails diva who only came to set to film his close-ups. He revealed he wouldn't come out of his trailer and he would smoke weed all day. And you'd walk by his trailer and this wall of of pot stench would just be like, <laughs> whoa, and like kind of push you to the side. Even worse, Oswald claims that Snipes at one point tried to strangle the film's director, David S. Goyer. Yeah, that's about 50 lines crossed right there. LL Cool J's alleged improvising on the set of Oliver Stone's football drama Any Given Sunday reportedly got so violent, the Miami-Dade Police Department had to get involved. According to MTV News, Cool J pushed and punched co-star Jamie Foxx, who was wearing a helmet, during an unscripted moment. I was rough with him again. Uh. And then, you know, I don't know why, but... You know, he thought it was a good idea to punch me in my face. Fox had reportedly tried to reason with LL, and when that didn't work, sources said Fox threw the punch in his face. Both were said to have suffered minor injuries, with LL claiming to have knocked Fox out with a retaliatory smackdown. Cool J allegedly claimed he was trying to make the scene, quote, more believable since they were acting. Whatever the case, Fox told MTV News in 2006 that they ended their feud after running into each other at a Miami Heat game. By that point, he said, when you're grown, you don't really have time for all that beefing. When you're young, it's cool to have your emotions on your chest, but we're grown now. What's a surefire way to tick people off in Hollywood? Air out your dirty laundry on social media. That's exactly what Dwayne The Rock Johnson did in August 2016 when he posted a message to Facebook calling out some of his male castmates in Fast 8. Without naming names, he wrote, Some conduct themselves as stand-up men and true professionals, while others don't. When you watch this movie next April, and it seems like I'm not acting in some of these scenes and my blood is legit boiling, you're right. TMZ later alleged that Johnson was directly referencing Vin Diesel, with whom Johnson was rumored to clash over Diesel's producing decisions, among other things. Whatever the case, their feud appears to have died down, leading some to wonder if the feud was really just a setup. Either way, for the amount of cash he's making for Fast 8, Johnson could probably stand to bite a few bullets. 
The allegedly awful way in which Dustin Hoffman treated co-star Meryl Streep on the set of Kramer vs. Kramer was well documented in the 2016 biography Her Again, Becoming Meryl Streep. According to excerpts obtained by Vanity Fair, Hoffman allegedly tortured Streep during the filming of the movie. He would bring up the death of her former boyfriend and once improvised a scene by smashing a glass against a wall, leaving shards of it in her hair. And then, in, in another scene, he slapped me, and, you, and when I see the movie, I see the imprint of his hand. Although she didn't participate in the biography, Streep did imply that shooting Kramer vs. Kramer with Hoffman wasn't exactly the best of times in a 2011 interview with CBS News. But I think he's very, very gifted. It wasn't the most fun I've ever had on a film. Pissing off Meryl Streep? Oh, Dustin, that's a big no-no. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more grunge videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.